we're going to be looking at the spacing in our writing, both spacing between letters within a word and the spacing between words. For this activity, we're going to call it spaghetti and meatballs, and we're going to use a yellow utensil and a red one, or you could use brown. If you don't have these, perhaps you could substitute and have spaghetti of a different color. I'm going to go through, I'm going to put spaghetti lines between the letters in a word. So a skinny line should be able to fit between each of the letters. The letters are not touching each other. There's just enough room for spaghetti to fit. The gap between our words is bigger. It's much wider than just that line of spaghetti that fits between our letters within a word. So in a second, we're gonna put our meatballs between the words. You can see there's a little bit of space between each of our letters, just wide enough for a piece of spaghetti, a skinny line to fit between the letters. If letters were touching, it might be a little bit trickier to read what it says. We can see where the spacing between our words is wider and there's enough room for a meatball. So I'm gonna put meatballs in each of the big gaps. There we go. Oh, oh, this one looks like just a tiny meatball. At the end of my writing, my writing kind of got cramped. I was able to fit each of my letters and I am still able to fit spaghetti between each of the letters but I might have chosen, and someone else might choose with the same sentence to bring their, their last word down to the next line. Sometimes we skip a line when we're writing. For the answer, I skipped two lines. So our sentence says, it's a joke, it says, what is fast, loud, and crunchy? Our answer is, oh, what is our answer? Can you read it? kind of tricky to read, not as easy to read as that first sentence, because we don't have the same spacing that shows us which words, which letters belong together to make a word, and makes it a little trickier for, there we go, for us to read our words. So I see a spaghetti would fit here. Uh -huh. Okay, a spaghetti fits here. Wow, look, there's a meatball space there. I could definitely fit like a couple spaghettis, or we could fit a meatball. Oh, those two letters are touching. I can't even make a spaghetti line fit between them. Not right there, yeah, those two are too close. And then we've got another one that's really wide. This one has a whole lot of spaces. Oh, I think that one is between the next word, though. Can you tell what it says? looks like we're supposed to actually have our word spaced out. A is the first word. And then we should have a, a space, a full meatball size space after the word A. I'm going to put my finger there to help show myself where I want to start my next word right after my finger. A, you see R. Oh, I'm writing my letters big as if this was twice as tall of a writing space. There's no small letter space shown here, but I'm gonna try my best to make my small letters half the height. A rock at, and then this C actually belongs to the next word. Those letters down here were so close I couldn't fit spaghetti between them. But we see the letter C. I like that it's not touching any other letters, but we wanna know what other letters belong to the same word. So we're gonna put H right next to it with just a piece of spaghetti fitting between then I and P, a rocket chip. <laughs> we'll add an exclamation point. Wow, that is a surprising answer. I'm gonna go back now that we've got that one really, oof, there we go. Now that we've got it even more clear, I could definitely fit a meatball here, which that is between words, but there should have been a meatball here and no other meatballs. See down here, we've got just one, two spaces, between the three words in this sentence. And it helps make it much easier to read if those meatball size spaces go between our words while the spaghetti spaces go between our letters.